Welcome, one and all, to the KOE Nation for another premium spirits review. I am your King of Extreme, Bill KOE, here to review another excellent single malt scotch whiskey, and I am joined by the elated, excited, overjoyed... The giddy Tony fucking G. Like, share, subscribe. Uh, the Belveni, one of your favorite distilleries. Yes. Uh, this is one that's really captured your imagination. Too. Yeah. They're uh, they're fourteen year Caribbean cask is actually, believe it or not, pretty close to as good in quality as the Glenfiddich twenty one. It's not quite there, obviously. The age statement on the Glenfiddich is skeptical. much grander, but. The craftsmanship of the Balvenie. Everybody loves this stuff. It's it very like, revered. A little harder still. to get into this bottle. <laughs> it fought me the whole way. And I love the 15-year age statement on almost all whiskeys. In a weird yet, way, it makes me look forward to it. I, I have yet to come across a 15-year that I don't like. And this is a sherry cask. And it's a scotch. This is, this is everything I like bundled into one. I liked most of the things you just said. Though. Yeah. Uh, Balvenie, uh, I'll be honest... It's captured Tony's imagination much more than it's captured mine. Uh, the 14 was excellent. But again, when you're comparing, like you just said what you were comparing it to. The Glenfiddich 21. Like, if you've had it, you know it's like, mm, it's a fine whiskey, but the Glenfiddich 21 is in a class all its own. But uh, the Belveni is just, it, it's one that's really captured Tony's imagination in particular. I'm not quite sure why, but I... I, I think we're going to change your mind here. I have a we feeling. will see. Let, I'm about to get my first nose of Belvedi's 15-year sherry cask. I'll this, let you uh, get into the reading while I get into the whiskey. This is a 47.8 ABV. Uh, the cask notes, the single malt has been matured exclusively in a European oak sherry butt for at least 15 years. Oh, so this is only sherry. Mm-hmm. Our malt master carefully samples the aged whiskey, cask by cask. He will select only single malt, characterized by dried fruit sweetness, rich oak and spice, to be bottled as Belveni single barrel sherry cask. The craft of whiskey making and the alchemy of cask spirit and time are embodied perfectly by the Belveni single barrel. Each cask tells you its own story, and it yields is by nature one of a kind. This bottle is one of no more than 800 drawn from a single cask. And then they do have this kind of interesting Little description diagram. diagram of the cask itself, uh, showing the rivets, the hoops, the, the quarter hoop. It, it's actually kind of, it, it makes the, it makes this stand out a lot more on the shelf. Now, I've actually sure. seen it on a whiskey tribe. They got some uh, bourbon barrels from a distillery and they took the hoops off and there's literally nothing holding it together. Just, yeah, it's just raisins and loveliness, isn't it? And the cask wow. making is an art all its own because there is no bonding agent holding these staves mm. together. It is just getting them at the right yeah. angle, putting them together, and then getting these hoops together. Because the minute they cut these hoops off, the whole cask just fell apart. So yeah. the cask making, regardless of whether you're making sherry casks or bourbon casks or scotch casks of any kind, that is an art it's, in and of itself. Yeah, it's restriction, gravity, and uh, just restricted energy but yeah I, I haven't had it but yeah this is all just raisins oh my god and fruity loveliness i'm not really getting a heavy chocolate maybe a slight toffee i was gonna say not it's not chocolate but there is a, a candy there for sure like we like we just had the dominium a little mm. while ago and that's heavy chocolate sherry but i think there's also a lot of uh, bourbon influence there yeah this definitely. one is all sherry and it really really shows oh yeah that's a lovely nose. That is. Oh wow. Good. Well, T. Yeah, I'm. I'm I think this is your chance to make <clears throat> me a believer. Okay. In Balvenie. Balvenie. Oh, so light. Oh wow. Oh. Oh wow. Ends with a bit of spicer. Heavy sherry, spicy finish. Oh, love that finish. Wow. I was about to say that. I bet that's right up your alley there, team. Oh, wow. Oh, but, wow. Um, oh, that's more. There's almost a, a touch of smoke. Almost. I could see what you're saying. There's... Uh, 
Maybe not smoke, but... I'm going to say it's more like a peppery allspice. Yeah. Like, I, I could be wrong there, but... Which is shocking to me mm. that they were able to get this much spice out of only sherry. Oh, wow. But that raisins on the nose mm. really is there in the palate on the front end. And the spice doesn't hit you again until you let the oxygen right. hit your mouth. No, this is a very comparable nose to palate, which you don't get all the time out of scotch, which... It's, it's sometimes, when it does happen, you get the nose to palate combination and it, it sinks up. It's kind of nice. Because this is, I mean, this is, you know what you're getting from now your nose is, to your uh, palate. I, I can't say I'm uh, disagreeing with this too much. It's just, the nose did not prepare me for the spice. Mm -mm, mm -mm. Now, I'm guessing, T, I know your palate. This is right up your alley. You're yeah. more than a little happy. Oh yeah, this. no, I'm loving this. I, this is this is marvelous. I love sherry casking and scotch, and this is this is beautiful. And the fact that it's got that spice kick at the end yeah. really probably now to me, I could do without. It's not the not a big deal for me, but this is some good stuff. I gotta say, out of what I've had from Belveni. Other than their 17 double wood, which was actually a uh, that, Yeah, that's amazing. I think it would be fair to say that Belveni's kind of like Maker's Mark for me, where if you get past their base offerings, anything beyond that really is good stuff that's worth your while. Now, we're going to grade this on a few five-star scales, as we are known to do here at the KOE Nation. As a single malt scotch, as a scotch, as a whiskey, then... It's shelving, and then the secret fifth question. So, Tony, as a single malt scotch on a five-star scale, the Belveni, 15-year-old mm. sherry cask edition. I'm going to go four. Four stars. Yeah, I, I think that's fair. I It's just, it's so direct on what it is, what you're getting, the nose, the palate, the age statement, the description of how they crafted this. You know what you're getting. When you get it, you're not even a little bit disappointed. This is great. Cinnamon pepper. That's what, mm -hmm. when I really let it sit. Actually, T, let that sit for 15 seconds. One second for every year. The malt master of Belveni distilled this for us. And I'm going to say, as a single malt, I'm going to be a little less generous than you. And I'm going to give it 375. It's right there. But, again, maybe it's just because I like the sherry and no spice. I like all the sweet, none of the heat. Right. I've got a sweet tooth when it comes to whiskey. You like the spicy, the earthy, the... Um, Minty, honey. Yeah, like, uh, let's be frank. There's not like, a lot of mint or honey. I, here, I know what I like when it comes to whiskey. Tony's willing to kind of explore a little deeper, so I'm going to give this 375. But okay, no, now, that's did totally anything fair. else open up in the 15 seconds? Oh, thing? when you, when you let this sit and you swish it around, like, you, you get every pour of the sherry cask influence. Like, it, it heats up a little bit. But it opens up, and you get every drop of flavor that comes out of that cask. And it's, it, yeah. That spice comes out in the end. Yes, it does. It starts overwhelming, actually. <laughs> woo hoo hoo mm. They're very McCallum-like. Mm. Which, I'm sure the Belveni folks uh, love. You know, who, who hates being compared to them? Um, yeah, I'm sure they hate it. Yeah, that one was a oh, spice wow. ride. Like, that was, like... About 10 seconds, I was like, wow, the sherry's really coming out. And then, then the last five seconds, it just, yeah, zang. Like, yeah. my whole tongue, the whole palate was just overwhelmed with sherry and spice and sweet. And, and everything nice. Yes. Well, like, all of the areas of my tongue were getting stuck. Oh, yeah. You, so. you, this, this just attacks your tongue. Not, like, in an intrusive way, but it... More of a playful, I'm going to tackle you and I'm going to make I'm you a I'm actually live. going to revise after having done the 15 second. And I'm going to go from a 375 to a 4 star scotch. Go. Just based off of the 15 second uh, there you go. paladin there. Because 
there's some folks out there that if you like that kind of intense flavor experience, it's almost more than you can handle, this can give it to you. Yeah, so. this this does it. 100%. It, it's there. This 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 feels on your tongue if you give it the chance what a lot of those hot bourbons do in terms of making your palate pop. Very interesting stuff. It actually got me to revise my score. That's All right. right. Now, as a scotch, a little bit broader world. I'll, I'll go 3.75 as a scotch because this is very exclusive as far as the palate goes. Like, if you don't like sherry cask, you're not going to like this. If you don't like some spice, you're not going to like this. I love it. I think the love spice it. is going to be the more divisive part of this. Yes. You're either going to love or hate it because of its spice. I love the sweet on the front. The raisiny goodness on the nose and on the palate, marvelous. The spice on the back, I like it, but I know some people won't. And that's why I'm giving it three and a half stars as a scotch. So it's, because again, you're broadening the world here a little bit. Now, as a whiskey... This is a very broad world now. As a whiskey, I'm going to stick with 3.75. I can't quite give it four because this is this is not something that you would ever really cocktail. Why, why would you? It'd have to be some sort of scotch martini. What, what did this uh, cost? This was 115. 115. So it'd be rather spendy. But honestly, Tony, I think this would make an amazing scotch and soda. Like, I think this would be, like, that spice on the end uh, with the bubbly soda water would just, uh, I know, I know, you, to you it would be a waste. I think, for But to me, me, it would be, like, ooh, if you were going to, like, try to make the most quintessential over-the-top scotch and soda. For me, this would be more of a. This would be. But really... that's also why I'm giving it three seven five. Is because I think it would be. So I'm agreeing with your score there, but I'm being a little more generous to my estimation because this would make such a good scotch. And I think this would be, be great on the ice. Uh, in a yeah, on the rocks. Yeah, on the rocks. I, I wonder if it would cut the sweet or the heat. I'm curious. I'm guessing it would cut the sweet. I think the spice would still be there. Yep, so you'd probably love them, Rocks, then. That'd be good. Uh, you know, sweet whiskeys can come and go for Tony. But, um, oh boy. Now, in terms of shelving. Oh, this is a top shelf for me. I love it. I like the distillery. I like the age statement, and it's a sharing cast. This is great. Uh, to me, it'd be top to middle. Um, it, uh, I like it, but like I said, I am not nearly as enamored with this distillery as Tony is. It's It has to prove itself to me. It's already proven itself to Tony, and this was one where it got a lot closer to doing so. Now, again, it's 17-year amazing stuff. If you can find a bottle of it 17, uh, goodness gracious. Oh, if you see the it. sampler pack, pick up the oh, sampler yeah. pack. That was amazing. That, yeah. that, that's what actually kind of got me into the Belvenny yeah. Distillery was, hey, check out this uh, sampler pack. Yep. And somebody just gifted you a bottle mm -hmm. of uh, the 14. 14. Yeah. And so yeah. Yeah, we've uh, been exploring it ever since. So here is the secret fifth question, folks. Tony, $120. When this bottle runs empty, will you replace it and seek another one? I'm... I'm tempted to say yes, but I also do want to go up and down the rest of their line just because we've only done the 12, the 14, and the 17, and now the 15. There's a few other expressions that they make that are very different from this. So they've got a bit of a wide range of flavors that I'd also want to try as well. Uh, for me personally, it's going to be rather hard for you to hear this, but my answer would be no. I would not seek out a bottle of this because I know that my indomitable broadcast partner over here will usually probably have one in stock uh, or something along that line. So I'm going to say an excellent scotch whiskey and one that I think is right up your at. Like, this would be a great gift. I could see this as a great gift whiskey. But other than that, folks, as I'm known to say around here, all that being said, this has been our review of the Balvenie 
15 year single malt scotch. I am the devilishly handsome outlaw himself, your king of extreme, Lord Phil, signing off and handing it off to my indomitable broadcast partner, the one, the only, the Blendmaster, Tony G. Like, share, subscribe.